Welcome back. Now, another really common reason that we may be using excess weight to keep our distance from relationships is because we don't think that we can or will have successful relationships. They're going to cause us pain. And so we use our weight as an unconscious buffer for what we have unconsciously determined that either we don't deserve or somehow we will just never be able to have. And if we should get it, well, it's only going to cause us pain anyhow. And we don't know this. We don't realize we're thinking about these things consciously. Now, this is just an example. There are potentially endless reasons that we may choose to manifest excess weight. But these are a couple of the most common, and so they could be a good place to start if you're dealing with that issue. And with kinesiology, you can ask your body if these could be true. I'm serious. You can. Because if these thoughts are true, if they are hidden within you, no matter what you do, you won't lose weight. Not if you're using the weight to achieve something, whether or not it is something that you consciously want. Otherwise, it will stay until you find and release the cause of it being there. And too many calories or not enough exercise or genetics or metabolic disorders, none of these are ever the real reason. They aren't. And I know that's a radical statement, but they aren't. These are only the doorways through which we are manifesting something onto our storyboard. They're the way we're bringing something into our world, consciously or unconsciously. And we don't know these things consciously, usually, but luckily our bodies do. Our bodies manifest as they are because of these beliefs, so you bet your butt that your body knows it has to and you can tap into this knowing so are you beginning to see how this can be a useful tool for you in removing some of these stubborn things that you want to change in your life because there is always more at hand if they're not moving out for you so how do we do this well there are two popular ways to test for beliefs and that's really what you're doing here you're just testing to see what you really think about something and the first way must be done with a partner but the second way does not so you can do it in private all right the first way and most common way is you just simply hold your arm straight out at about shoulder height and make the statement that you want to test so you might say when I was born, I was named John, knowing full well that your birth name was Robert. Now, your partner will gently press down on your arm around the wrist area. Now, this isn't a test of muscles. We're not trying to see which of you are stronger. It has nothing to do with it. The tiniest woman can test the most muscle-bound man. So this isn't a test of muscles, not at all. But if you watch closely, you will notice that if your body agrees with the statement, then your arm will offer resistance to the downward pressure. It remains strong. But if it disagrees with your statement, it will go noticeably weak, and it might even visually dip down a bit. It will be easy to kind of press it down. And in this example, the arm should demonstrate weakness because your birth name is Robert and you said that it was John. So you can kind of get the feel of doing this by just testing things that you already know is true. Your arm, if you make an incorrect statement, or something rather that it just doesn't agree with, it may feel correct to you, but your body will tell you, no, that's not what it believes. And when it doesn't believe it, then it will go slightly weak. And that's how you know it disagrees with your statement. And it's as simple as that. So if your body agrees with the statement or sees it as true, then it will remain strong to the pressure. If it experiences weakness, then the statement is not consistent with your actual hidden beliefs. So in our example, you might test, 
I want to lose weight. And when you do that, your arm remains strong, indicating yes, you do want to lose weight. Then you might test again while making the statement, I deserve to lose weight. Or, I will be successful at losing weight. And you might be surprised to find that your body does not at all agree with either of those statements. Because our bodies are ever obedient to our beliefs. They cannot help but be because they are created by them. Now, if you want to take the test alone, I am happy to tell you that you can do it just as well with your own hands. And in this method, just take your less dominant hand, so if you're right-handed, take your left hand and place the tip of your thumb and any finger you choose together so that they form a circle. Now, some say do this finger or that finger, but I've tried them all and I get the exact same results, so I don't think it matters. So make a circle with your thumb and another finger. Then place the index finger and the thumb of your other hand inside the little circle that you've made. Make your statement and then to test, press outwards with the fingers that you've inserted into the circle. If your body sees the statement as true, the fingers remain touching or strong, but if it sees the statement as untrue, the circle may gap a bit, or your fingers will at least noticeably weaken. Isn't this amazing? I know it looks silly, but with this little tool, you can uncover not only what you think you think, but what you actually think. It's the Ouija board to your mind, to your hidden beliefs and agendas. And you will uncover all your ghosts there, metaphorically speaking. For example, you may think you want to be wealthy, but make the statement, I deserve to be wealthy, or I believe I can be wealthy. And see if your body holds strong and agrees with that, or if it weakens and tells you, no, I don't think so. It's amazing. And it is in this way that we begin to uncover the hidden thoughts and agendas that are quietly governing our lives and thwarting our attempts at change. Now I'll post statements to try in the transcript or in the more sections of this video. So try a few and see or make them up as you are led. Start with things you know you agree with to get a feel for the strength of agreement or weakness of disagreement. So you get a feel for it. Once you think you can tell, then try a few of these statements, <laughs> because you may be very surprised with the results. I know I was. Okay, so that's the first tool, kinesiology, tapping into the storehouse of belief in a way that bypasses our conscious minds and therefore our projected prejudices and beliefs. Pretty cool, huh? So you want to know what you really think, and therefore what you will actually get? There you go. Test it out. See what you really think. Now, once we find out what we're thinking, how do we begin to get rid of the things that we don't want to think? Well, sometimes simply exposing these thoughts openly to ourselves will cause them to just dissipate. Just pulling them into the light sometimes makes them go away. But what if they don't? Well, to help you begin to move these beliefs out and better beliefs in, we're going to do something else that, quite frankly, looks even sillier. <laughs> and again, you may have heard of this before or even tried it, but I want you to try it one more time as a favor to me here today. Now, there are countless YouTube videos on this, and websites on this, and books on this, as well as instructors you can hire to help guide you through it. But you don't have to do any of that. You can also just do it by yourself. Please join me for the conclusion of Doorways to the Unknown.